So this week's project really stands on its own. It is part of the series that we've been doing on the 1930s antique style transmitter that I will be using for a, a kind of vintage or retro parks on the air application. I basically needed to produce high voltage and voltage to light the filaments of the tubes in the transmitter. Getting this from a battery, of course, would involve multiple 9 volt batteries in a big series combination, as well as a couple of D cells to light the filaments. And this would be part of the portable transmitter system. Now, I understand that this is interesting to some of you that want to be able to power your low power tube type equipment or valve type equipment on batteries. So, and I'm thinking things like uh, small surplus radios like the ARC-5. I'm thinking about small transmitters, QRP rigs, like perhaps a uh, 5763 transmitter or a 6AQ5 style oscillator or a 6AG7, that kind of thing, where we have one or two tubes and we've made a few watts of power. And we need a high voltage supply to be able to power that up. Or maybe it's some type of military pack set that you'd like to try to power up. That took me down this road of looking for a way to make a DC to DC high voltage converter. Okay. Now, a lot of high voltage converters are out there for charging, uh, you know, electric vehicles and things like that. These are pretty big units. And there seems to be a lot of DC to DC converters that step 12 volts to 24 volts, or perhaps 12 volts to 48 volts, fairly common. But getting one that would step 12 volts up to 200 or 300 volts DC, that's another story. That's a little more difficult. Can be done if you're willing to go down to the board level and design your circuit and adjust the, the voltage regulation. Certainly doable with many, many chips that are out there today. But, you know, we're hams. We're, first of all, we don't want to get in, that involved with a circuit like that. We want to be able to buy something off the shelf. So what I am intending to do with this project is to use an ordinary AC inverter. Now, what's an inverter? An inverter takes DC and turns it into AC. AC, uh, like your mains, either, you know, 120 volts or... 230 or 240 volts if you're in the EU, and that's 50 or 60 hertz. So these units are very common, mass-produced, available all over the internet and at your auto parts store, even in Walmart and every, every place you can get these things. I wanted something very small and something that probably was in the no more than 50 to 100 watt range for what I was trying to do. So I was able to find a converter, and the converter was 100 watts rated, and it has a couple of uh, USB 5 volt taps as well. So it's not only a step up converter, it's a step down converter, taking the 12 volts down to 5 volts, and the 12 volts up to 120 volts AC in this case. Out of the box, I thought, okay, how efficient is this thing going to be? But uh, I measured the efficiency in AC, and it was quite good. And the rating was somewhere in the high 80s. I thought that was quite good uh, for a, a small inverter. So the first thing I did is I put a bridge on there and then later a voltage doubler. And in this video, let's explore this inverter and if we can rectify the output and produce a high voltage supply. So that's what this video is all about. Really, it's the fourth in the series of the 1930s style portable transmitter but really, this video can stand on its own. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. No, Will Robinson. Danger. So why did I uh, pick this particular converter? Actually, I just picked it because it was fairly inexpensive on Amazon. And it was the lowest power inverter I could find. So this 100 watt inverter is one of the smaller ones that are offered on the market. I wanted a low power inverter because I knew that 
the larger ones would have large circuit boards, be harder to package. Also, this one had pretty good efficiency specifications. Now, the efficiency is not going to be anywhere near as good as a proper DC to DC converter. Uh, also, it had the AC output and a pair of DC outputs. Let's open this thing up and see what we have inside. Let's see if we can get this back bell off. I think this is the secret to getting it apart. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, that's nice. Okay, we got some nice little circuit board in there. Let's see. Oh, we got a couple screws in the front as well. Let's get those out. Ordinary uh, Phillips head screws. Nothing fancy here. Okay. Nice. So that'll be simple to deal with. The input wires right there. I think if I take these out, the wires will be longer and I should be in pretty good shape. So I've applied power from the power supply and this one initially red and then green. 110 volts AC and 5.3 volts DC out of the USBs. The ground on the input from the power is attached to the ground on the 5 volts. It is not attached to the AC either side, which is good news, because we really need our AC supply to be isolated from our DC supply on the transmitter. So the next important thing to measure is what is the quiescent current, or the amount of current that the device takes when it's not supplying any power. It looks to be about 43 milliamps. That's important. We don't want this thing to be on all the time. We only want to activate it when we are in the transmit position. I have to think a little bit about what I want to do with the 5 volts. If I key the 5 volts on the transmit position, it's going to take so many seconds for the filaments to light. I might not want to tolerate that. So now I'm rethinking whether I can use the 5 volts off this module for the filament. Also, the, uh, the little inverter seems to have a courtesy beep when it loses power. So going from transmit to receive, we'll hear this. I have a bridge rectifier, a 100K resistor as a bleeder resistor across the plus and minus terminals of the bridge rectifier, as well as the filter capacitor, which is 100 microfarads at 450 volts. So that's plenty good for what we think we're going to generate here. When I turn it on, we get 157 volts, and of course that 100K is the load resistor in this case. It's a bleeder resistor. It's a very, very light bleeder resistor. And this is what we'd expect. You remember the old formula for determining the peak voltage. You know, we have about 107 volts, and when we multiply that by 1.414, we're going to get up around 150 volts. So the thing I'm interested in though is not that we have 157 volts, it's what happens when we put a load on that output. Will it remain at 157 or will the regulation be so poor that I need to take steps? So the next thing I'm going to do is changing nothing, I'm simply going to put a load on here and see how stable the, uh, the output voltage is. Okay, I'm pretty impressed. We are definitely putting out 150 to 160 volts DC. And I've got the I've got 2K on there right now. Now it's interesting, we are getting looks like one amp at about 13 volts. Let me bring the voltage down. Okay, we're in milliamps. We have a 2K load. Turn this on. Excellent, 68 milliamps. So this guy is delivering 68 milliamps into 2K. And to do that, it's having to supply 12 times 1, or 12 watts of power. So you don't want to be in transmit too long. Now the advantage that we have is we're in CW mode. It's a very low duty cycle mode. So the, the output's not going to be key down. So this one amp draw is going to be cut down to 
you know, effectively the, some fraction of an amp, depending on your keying speed. The next question is, what happens when we key the output? I'm going to hook a key up to the output, and we're going to look at the voltage and see what happens when we key the output to see how the regulation is affected. I'm very happy with the current, but is the voltage going to be regulated enough, and is the little inverter going to be able to take this suddenly arriving and disconnecting load that we have in our CW type system. Okay, so this is key up, key down, key up, key down. Okay, so we're talking about, you know, 15 volts of uh, regulation issue here. That would be doubled once we have a voltage doubler. Actually, it might be better than my power supply, however. Remember, my power supply fell 50 volts under load. But I still think I'm going to do a voltage doubler and then some type of regulation after the doubler to try to get that variation down. You'll notice on my power supply, this is key up, key down. It goes right to an amp, key down, key up. Everything's happy. The power supply is happy, the converter is happy, there's no, no issue here. And of course when you kill power it beeps. And when you bring up power it goes red then green. Okay, all happy. And we get our 152 volts and then key down 138. It's not great regulation but it's not bad. So here's the voltage doubler. This uses two diodes, two capacitors, and I have a uh, some type of a bleeder resistor here. It looks like 180K. We're getting a solid 300 volts out. I imagine under load that's going to go down to somewhere around 250. So I now have a 5K load resistor on 300 volts. That's going to give a 60 milliamp draw. Let's see what we're going to go down to. Okay, looks like 275. That's not bad. That's a 25 volt drop under load and it looks like up on the main power supply we're going to be drawing more current of course because it's more power it looks like about 1.4 amps 1.4 amps at 12 volts to produce 275 volts at 60 milliamps EWA AM QSO party this weekend I'm going to be really busy uh, the only time I'll have to operate is at night I'm not much of a nighttime operator I usually get uh, Okay, that's the vintage sideband net. Wow, that's really good efficiency. So let's be a little more critical on our power measurement. Now, with the voltage doubler and the 180K resistor, we're down just below 12 volts. It's drawing 227 milliamps quiescent. So let's bring this up now to 13 something. There's 13 volts. Okay, so you can see now not much change in the uh, in the current, a little bit of change. Next, let's key the transmitter, and by keying the transmitter, I mean let's key the 5K load and see what happens to our current drain, both on the power supply and on the and on the output okay 1.449 and back down to 250 quiescent next we need to measure the output voltage okay we need to see what we're seeing on the output key down that's part of our calculation okay we still have our 246 milliamp quiescent current and now we have our output voltage of 312 volts now let's go key down remember we have the 13 volt input 280 at 1.445 amps. 280 at 1.44. Okay, so here's one of the questions you guys will have, and that is how much hash does this thing put out when it's unloaded in the receive mode, I guess we'd say. And how much when we're in full transmit mode, drawing an amp and a half out of the power supply 
and putting out 275 volts into the 5k load. So I have the receiver tuned for 6 kilohertz bandwidth at a frequency of 100 kilohertz. So let's turn that up. That's definitely us. Let's turn it off. Well, I'll take that back. Background noise is that bad. Okay, let's turn it back on again. Let's go key down. Okay, that's the hash. Full key down. Let's go up to 80 meters. Okay, this is the 80 meter band. Not picking anything up, guys. Let's go to 40 meters. Nothing. Let's bring the antenna closer. Nothing, guys. This is an extremely clean inverter. I'm getting no hash at all radiated from the inverter. And I've taken no steps. There's no filtering, there's no capacitors, there's no ferrites, there's no shielded wire. This is wide open. This converter is nice and clean and uh, maybe that's a feature of using a 60 hertz converter rather than a high frequency converter. Okay, we are now hooked up to the 2200 milliamp hour drone battery and we're going to see if the drone battery can supply the 300 volts. Okay, yeah. That's looking pretty good. Now let's go key down. Not bad at all. 270 volts key down. Looks like this idea is going to work out. So pretty impressive. I don't think anybody expected that this small inverter was going to make a decent DC power supply and that it would be so quiet. I can't believe how quiet this thing is for hash and EMI. It's absolutely amazing compared to any mechanical vibration system or even a chopper system or high frequency converter. This thing is very quiet at the HF frequencies that we use.